product review time. I got two units here. One is to dismantle and test and try out, and the other is to give away to one of you guys. I'll have the giveaway details at the end of the video. So is there any TS100 fans here? Um, this seems to be a direct competitor going directly after the TS100 portable soldering station because it can use the tips. But not only can it use the TS100 tips, it's adjustable to use my favorite Hakko T12 tips. So this is kind of cool. It can do either tip and it's exactly right now when I go to the website, it's exactly half the price of a TS100. Uh, and if you use coupon code Jeff Escort LX, you'll even get 3% off of that. So I'm curious if they had to cut any corners. Is it is it better? Is it worse? How's the quality on this thing? Because it's only $35 right now for the starter kit. Um, so this one really has piqued my curiosity. All right, let's see. I think this is just the base starter kit they sent me. And we'll see what's included. Again, starting at 35 bucks, pretty dang reasonable. Um, and I didn't know exactly what I'm gonna do with, geez, the review copy. Um, it's going in my portable toolbox. I'm sure a lot of you guys have a toolbox that you keep in the trunk of your car or whatever when you get those uh, emergency calls from friends and family when something's broken and you need to fix something out in the field. Oh, it comes with both tips. Okay, they may have sent me the slightly more expensive kit that was like $37 or something. I don't know. They have a few different variations depending on the tips. But there's your classic T12, and here's the TS100 tip. And uh, here's the station. And I do believe you have to... Okay, here you can see right inside. Let me get right up in there. Anyways, what I'm mumbling about is to change tips, I think you have to... Got to loosen up a set screw, I think. Yeah, I'm going to have to loosen up that screw. I think I have to remove the uh, extra set of uh, contacts if I'm going to be using the T12. Yeah, you can see right there how it lines up. But these contacts are being shorted out. I got to look to see if I have to remove those. So the owner's manual doesn't directly come out and say you have to remove... Uh, these contacts if you're using the long T12 tip but I think I'm going to anyways just because um, I have no plans to use the TS100 tip since I'm all stocked up on uh, the Hakko tip so I'm just going to go ahead and remove the TS100 contacts just to be safe maybe they can stay in I don't know but I'm not going to use them so let's take it apart it's got extra screws. I wonder if those are if you lose lose the uh, small screws that hold the contacts in. I think if I just remove this Allen screw here, the back cover comes off. So this can do, uh, when you supply it up to the 24, 25 volts, it can do the uh, full 65 watts, which is, you know, incredible compared to the old soldering iron technology. Uh, come on, these clips are really holding in there. Those of you that uh, watch my channel and see my other reviews know that I love the Hakko tips because of the integrated heating element into the tip. Uh, it's all one unit, unlike old soldering irons that were like 900 amps where the tip was separate from the heating element. Well, you have a loss of efficiency between those two separate parts, but when they're one part, you get greater efficiency, but also these are higher wattage to start off with anyway, so the heating power is just night and day different on any of these cartridge style. Um, I'm going to need a smaller screwdriver. Any of these cartridge style tips could blow away the old 900 m style tips. I think I'll put the screws back in. They probably give it some mechanical support. Holds the circuit board down to the uh, chassis. So.
Okay, so now it's ready for uh, T12. Let's see where the contacts line up. And I can put this back together now. Okay, so it does have one uh, tab there and then some clips along the side, so it should give a nice snap there. And then for that uh, set screw, which is, there's a set screw. Can't be the one. Oh, here it is. That's it. Actually, it's not really a set screw because it does have a head. I don't know why I call it a set screw. There. And I think it wants you to lock the tip in place. I'm just going to make sure that's snug, yeah. By just tightening up this set screw a little bit. Look at that. It's got DC barrel and USB-C. So this would be great for, uh, like if you have a USB-C power bank, you can be out in the middle of nowhere where there's no outlet nearby, or you can go with a traditional DC jack. I like that. Now I'm gonna see if I can fumble my way through the user menus without reading the owner's manual. Hopefully it's set up in a way that it's easy enough to figure out. Get the display in view there it is a nice looking display uh okay it must have like a start button i'm did i say i'm only using 12 volts so it's going to take a while to heat up uh since it's um intended for 24 volts the, the tips are you know intended for 24 but it will run on 12 it just takes longer to heat up uh it still says stop how do i tell this thing to go does it have a sensor in it it's a stop work okay i guess you had to push and hold now it says work temperatures climbing oh it's already preset to 350 c which is what i'm used to my other irons are set to 350. and uh, again i'm only using 12 volts just because it's convenient i have a AC adapter just laying on my bench that's plugged in all the time. That's 12 volts for automotive stuff. I'm just going to try it out uh, on this unit. Okay, we should be able to melt some solder now. Yeah, look at that. It would even tinned up nicely too. Okay, I wonder if I can figure out how to stop it. I think I just push and hold the same button. Yeah, stop. Now it's off. Well, that wasn't so bad. Here I've switched out the tip for my large hacko tip that I like to use for removing uh, several pins at the same time. And this is a sneak peek at the next product review giveaway you're going to see on my channel. Uh, this is basically a battery bank. It's a jump start pack, but it has a DC out. So we are going to uh, pretend we're out in the field where there's no outlets or power available and we need to solder something. Um, I need to turn this on. This senses a load, so if I don't turn it on a certain amount of time, yeah, I see it just shut off on me. So I need to turn this on and then tell it to heat right away before this shuts down to conserve power. Okay, so now it's heating. Battery bank will stay on. Right there you see we're sitting at 15.4 volts, so we should get some decent power out of this thing. Okay, we should be able to melt leaded solder now. I'm just going to clean that tip off, give it a second to recover, and uh, yeah, there we go. It's looking nice. Now, this would heat up faster uh, if I was closer to that 24 volts, but if you're in a pinch, I mean, it works. I will include some shots of the guts. So here's the OLED display. Uh, it does have a fuse on each set of contacts. So this set has a fuse and then this set has a fuse. So that's nice. This DC jack is very sturdy. That's nice to see. It's really solid.
and I'll include the uh, microcontroller for those of you that are into that kind of stuff. It's worth noting that they did use brass inserts where the uh, printed circuit board anchors down to the plastic. So that's kind of a nice touch. I mean, they could have just gone straight into the plastic with the screws, but they did do the extra little step there to put in those brass inserts. I'm going to let this thing warm up here for a second. I'm going to do some real world soldering. Uh, well, going through the uh, owner's manual, I noticed besides uh, over voltage and under volt voltage detection, it also has over current detection. So I'm guessing if I would have left those contacts in there, I would have gotten a short circuit warning. Um, and what else did I see that was, oh, when I had it apart, there was a component that I wasn't quite sure where to go now. So right here, um, kind of tough to see through the plastic. Anyways, a strange looking component there. I wasn't sure what it was, but reading the manual, it has a, a circuit board temperature sensor. So if the handle itself gets too hot, it will uh, warn you, and I suppose it will automatically shut off after a certain point, which is probably adjustable. Um, so with the USB-C that is used for firmware updates, and it also can power the unit, but you have to have, a, I think it's a quick charge 3.0 to be able to deliver enough power. Your standard 5 to 9 volt USB-C uh, isn't enough. You have to have the quick charge USB-C but I'm just using the uh, regular 12 volt um, AC DC ad uh, adapter because well, everyone's got one of these or everywhere. Just 12 volt, 12.4 right there. I usually use a smaller J tip for this. I'm using the tip that this came with in the kit. A little bit bigger than what I'm used to, but uh, I can make it work. Just reflowing some uh, Commonly known fractured solder joint areas here. And I'm still set to 350 for a temperature. Well, this little unit works great on surface mount, and since it is 65 watts capable, it should have no problem soldering big stuff, even like large connectors, lug connectors, and big ground planes. Um, it will have plenty of power for that stuff too, so it's very universal. Now, the downside with it is, well, it's not like a traditional bench soldering iron, so there's no proper stand. You have this as a stand, a little tiny sponge, uh, I mean, I know it's intended for mobile use, so you're not really going to get a full-on stand like you would with this kind of soldering iron, but it uh, actually fits in there pretty good. Um, there's also no power source, no power cord, there's no AC adapter that comes with it. But with that being said, I mean, it's quite universal as far as the jacks go, so chances are if you're into electronics at all, you probably already have something that can power this. Um, and with cords on soldering irons I'm always very picky about like the strain relief and how it feels with the way the cord is pulling but this does not provide any kind of cord or power source with this base model kit but this is great for mobile and like I said earlier I'm looking forward to tossing this into my mobile uh, toolbox and I will always have a great little soldering solution uh, and it will have no problem with the big stuff, works great in the small stuff. So, uh, yeah, I think I covered everything I usually cover with soldering stations. Um, so the, uh, the giveaway, this is going to be somebody. So 24 hours after this video is live, I'm going to randomly select a comment and reply to you. 
Uh, watch out for the YouTube scams, which I think YouTube has under control now. Uh, so it'll be me contacting you, not some random person from some random whatever. It's going to be me, Jeff Escort LX, and uh, you'll contact me through email if you're the winner. I will give you my email address. I will not ask you to use some weird app. I won't ask for money. It'll be 100% completely free. I pay for the shipping. So if somebody says you won and wants money, uh, yeah, tell them to, you know what. Anyways, I think that's it. Great little unit. I'll have an affiliate link if you miss out and if you're not the winner. And if you're in the market for a portable soldering iron, I got nothing bad to say about this little guy. It's kind of cool. Um, for under 40 bucks, really. Anyways, I'll give you a coupon code. I'll give you an affiliate link. Uh, and this is a promotional video, and with the affiliate link, I do get a small kickback. So, I mean, you know, take it as you will, but honestly, not a bad little unit. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.